everybody, before we start the show, just a bit of a heads up. Um, while we were recording last night, I lost power. There was a huge storm that rocked New York City. And so, yeah, uh, for the most part, 50 minutes or so of this podcast, you won't see my lovely face, Kyle's lovely face, or a special guest Josh's lovely face, but you'll still be able to hear our awesome opinions about video games and the world of PlayStation. So with all that said, with all that out of the way, past Joe, start the show. Wait no longer. Greatness has arrived. Welcome to the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players, where each and every Thursday, me and my best friend Kyle talk about the latest and greatest in all things PlayStation. And so with that, it's the summer weeks. It's the summer months. There's not a lot of news, but you know what we do have on the show today? The greatest co-host who ever is, whoever will be, Mr. Kyle Stevenson. It's me. How are you, sir? I'm back from, so, the, back from the brink of almost dying. Here I am. Almost dying. But you're yeah. here. I'm you here. were telling me before the the show started, like a few days ago, uh, you were just like, "Hey, I have to, you know, we can do the show earlier because we have Josh on. Don't worry, I'll introduce you in a sec." And you're just like, "I need to do my breathing exercises." It's like, Holy oh yeah, shit, that's it's, it's uh, cold for everyone that you know has asthma or knows someone with asthma. Yeah. Uh, I take a nebulizer, which is like a breathing treatment when I'm really mm-hmm. really sick. Uh, basically, basically, if anyone doesn't know, I have in the last three weeks since my summer camp job started. I have beaten pink eye in both eyes, uh, yeah. and, and now I am working through uh, what the doctor thinks is pneumonia, which is just kind of what. St- yeah, it's it's been sticking with me for a week and a half. I've been on antibiotics for almost eight days. And here I thought, yeah, I, here I thought Kyle was just in deep cover scouting no. Area Fifty One. Nope. I mean, the rest of the chemical warfare, I guess, but no. It's, oh, yeah. Boy. But I'm, I'm very happy to be here. I'm, I'm so excited. I missed doing and the there's... show with you, so I'm happy. Yeah, no problem. No problem. And with us this week, our special guest, because here in the summer months, we like to do a little bit of uh, cross podcast play, is a good friend, Josh, from Constantly Calibrating. How are you, Josh? I'm special. Yay. I'm doing well. How about, how about you guys? It's great to be here. Yeah. It's an honor <sighs> no to have you, Josh. It's not not nah. <laughs> we talked about it right before the show started. You're from Arizona, so you're used to the dry heat. Me, I'm dying. It's like <laughs> it's like eighty, not eighty. It's like in a high nineties with like sixty five percent humidity. I think. Yeah. So bad. I'm just on the I'm on death's gate. And then I told you oh. before the show, I'm turning off the AC. So the video <laughs> listeners, you guys are gonna watch a man slowly melt. But Josh, <laughs> before we start the show. Where are you from? What do you do, sir? I mean, I'm actually from New York originally, but I've been in Arizona so long that I may as well be an Arizona native. Uh, but otherwise, as far as the do, I, for seven and a half years, have been running Constantly Calibrating, a podcast network that has been on hiatus for pretty much all of 2019. Kind of, we hit the end of 2018 and it was just kind of, mm, what can we do better kind of situation. Uh I'll tell you there. Wanted to come back around PAX East, but uh, I had I made this little mandate that we weren't going to come back till the new website was designed. And GoDaddy's been jerking us around on transferring off of their service because I, them. yeah, I'll find them because <laughs> I made that crucial mistake long ago of uh, starting up with GoDaddy and just yeah. trying to leave for a while. So uh, the wonders of that abusive relationship. So, anyways, the site's kind of we're behind on that, but we'll. Uh, mm-hmm. So I decided we we're going to come back sooner rather than later. What's up? We got the podcast up, and you just launched your first episode. Yeah, which we. Is the reason why I wanted you on, because I wanted you on a way earlier. I think like back in March, but you're just like, well, wait till the podcast comes back. Yeah, That's because I didn't really want to like. Uh, I I already guessed spot. I had a guest spot like uh, Fe- February March ish on uh, with the the Mega Dads, and I was like, this is great and all, and I like I will come on your show whenever you want, but. Th- th- you're there's if you link any of my stuff it's not leading anywhere that matters <laughs> yeah. so i'd rather try to like have things when well, things are live so yeah the uh catch all gaming podcast <laughs> premiered uh, episode one last week the newest episode premieres actually after we're done recording this uh the second nice. episode and then uh constant calibrating podcast officially comes back with live episodes uh the tuesday the 23rd awesome. with get with guests joining starting Ooh. on the 30th well, I'm glad you got the practice out of the way with the Mega Dads, right? Amateur yeah. hour over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dude, Adam, Adam Leonard, real talk, before we even get into the show, what a talented individual. He Beautiful is man. a talented, sweet human being. Yeah, he did the logo. His commissions are open. Art, 
the art of Adam Leonard. Mm-hmm. Go over there, check him out. With that, before we talk about the the biggest news this year, Final Fantasy VII has no plans for any console other than the PlayStation 4. Before we talk about the Gearbox crossable, possible crossplay of Borderlands 3 and all crossplay. your viewer questions, let's talk about this little segment I like to call what we've been playing. And I'm going to start with you, Kyle, because you've sure. had two weeks, sir. Uh, two weeks of being sick. Ugh. I'm going to say scouting uh, Area 51. Well, before I disappoint you and everyone else, uh, I like the, the new phrase you just came up with, crossable. I mm-hmm. think that's how people should start <laughs> when, when when games come out like oh it's crossable that crossplay might it's, be coming. Ooh, I like that a lot. Put that down there, um, Bobby, Bobby Miller. Write that down. There you go. So I don't forget. <laughs> um, so what I've been playing, I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint. Uh, you know, I camp's been killing me, so I haven't been playing much. And I know again, this is a PlayStation show. But it's easier for me to play the Switch when I'm at my second job. How dare you get out? So I've been playing Super Mario Maker 2, uh, (laughs) which is pretty – it's pretty great. Uh, It's basically what I remember from the the old days when I started gaming. Um, But it's kind of weird. Like I'm kind of over the mascot platformer type thing Mm -hmm. from Nintendo. Like it's it's kind of – it's not really – I'm not dying to go back and play. Like I play because I have it, but there's no real – urgency for me to like keep going in i don't know what it is it's it's kind of a weird feeling dude and that's the thing though you're really good at platformers yeah like yeah. kyle's disgustingly good at platformers <laughs> and so like um, yeah like mario makers just seems like it's up your alley don't worry it's like the summer of nintendo they got everything yeah. they got marvel versus i'm i'm more summer. excited marvel for ultimate friday alliance i want to play ultimate yeah. alliance real bad but yeah like i'm nervous dude. as hell about that game uh, but i am too I, but i love the first two so i can't oh wait. sure yeah yeah yeah, PlayStation show. So yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is fuck. This is a PlayStation show. Yeah, oh, yeah, damn it. yeah, I know. I brought my DS and everything. So no, I I bought Mario Maker too. I suck so bad at platformers. That's the thing. Platformers, racing games, fighting games. I can't do it. Like, there's just I don't know. My brain just can't function well. So like, I'm even failing at like the one star levels. Mm. But I'm loving it. But like, I'm looking yeah. at these creations on on Twitter. Like there's one where like I shared it on at, uh, at Mr. Bad Bit, it like it was like Fireball City. It was just like oh yeah, I saw that one. Oh yeah, that one. I'm just like these Mario fans no, hate. You. Like I I'm pretty sure all these Nintendo fans they hate themselves and mm-hmm. they just want to go through the punishment. <laughs> well, that video with the it. fireball spinning thing just continues. And the guys like running backwards and jumping yeah. like perfect time draw. I literally just was <laughs> staring at that. I'm like this is this is anxiety in video format like yeah. i showed my wife that because we've been playing a lot of different mario stuff lately yeah. and she just was laying in bed and she just looks over at me after the video's over and she's like why <laughs> yeah. and then she just went right to sleep <laughs> yeah. and, and here's the thing and this is josh this is how you know what type of podcast you're about to walk into uh close your ears sammy okay uh it's like <laughs> mario maker is the s and m of of just platforms <laughs> you just want to be punished you uh-huh. just want to be treated like shit and then bam maybe you'll complete the mission but you never do you mm-hmm. never do i just see constantly like little x symbols everywhere i'm just like man this game mm-hmm. awful yeah, <laughs> yeah no we're all the subs awful. and you know the the occasional creators and <laughs> doms and just apologies to any B- P- people in the bdsm community i i don't know enough to actually know if i said anything accurate yeah. <laughs> you know what don't worry about it with that josh Yes, I got a question for you. What do you got? You've been playing a game I'm very interested about that we haven't covered here on the Trophy Room. <coughs> you've been playing a little game called Judgment. Yeah, I've been playing a fair bit of Judgment. I was streaming that for a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. how are you liking it? Because I'm I'm only hearing like really amazing things, but like the Yakuza team and what they do typically don't translate to what I enjoy video games. Mm-hmm. How are you enjoying it? Where Where do you come at when it comes to Yakuza games? Well, that's things I've never played any of them. Uh, oh. My co-host Justin has been at, telling me to play them for the longest time. Um, I discovered like the day before Judgment came out that I actually own like two or three different Yakuza games on the PlayStation. Cause I'm guessing they were probably PS Plus, Plus games that games, I. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit! I guess I could have been playing these games. Cool. Uh, <laughs> but so I came into Judgment really fresh. Um, but I'm liking it so far. I mean, the story's somehow completely grounded and absolutely over the top psychotic. Um, mm. The combat's fun, you know. I, I mean, I, most of my combat time is just running, bouncing off walls, and kicking people. Um, the issue I had with the game is I was streaming it, and so I was purposely only playing on streams. But the problem was I'm only able to stream with the current schedule like 
two, you know, four to six hour sessions a mm-hmm. week. So what literally happened is every week I'd come back to the game and I could not do the combat again. So I took <laughs> the game off the schedule because I'm like, this is, game has too many intricate things be- and for for me to be able to do this kind of schedule with it. So now so it's kind it of mostly like, my personal. like melee combat. Again, mm-hmm. I'm like totally 100% melee. Um, mm-hmm. It is 100% melee combat. Uh, there's two different st- uh, fighting styles. I can't remember the proper names, so they're blue and red is what okay. I always refer to them. Uh, one style is for mostly just one-on-one. The other style is more like widespread AoE, kind of like wide kicks and stuff like that. Um, and you can pick up, uh, you can grab enemies and throw them at each other. You can pick up weapons and you know, beat them up. And then also your enemies, if they have like a, I, I'm, I think there's times when they have guns and you have to dodge. I haven't seen that yet, but there's like, they have a blade. And if they strike you with a blade, you actually take mortal wounds that you have to either go Ooh. to a doctor and get healed or a first aid kit. And essentially it, uh, reduces the maximum length of your health bar. That that sounds okay. like what I know of like the Yakuza series. Yep. The, yeah, the real attention to detail and yeah. So my question for you, Josh, because you're like it's grounded, but at the same time wacky. How, how is it grounded, and how does it get like insane? Like I'm thinking when I'm thinking wacky, I'm thinking like Saints Row Three. That's what. I'm, that's sure, what I'm sure. About. Not quite the insanity of the Saints Row Three and Four stuff that, that I've, I've seen yet. Um, but like the grounded aspect, you play a character, uh, Yagami, who is a former lawyer who the begin the very beginning of the game this is the very beginning so minimal spoiler thing for the introduction you were a lawyer who um fought hard for this guy who was accused of the, of I believe of arson or murder I don't remember exactly which and then after you get him off he goes and uh, murders his girlfriend brutally oh, violently shit. um and then you disgrace leave the law firm and jumps 3 years in the future and you're now a private detective with your assistant is a former yakuza member Whoa, and you're working okay. both for Yakuza people and for your former law firm. And it's like this very grounded kind of dark kind of tale. And you're trying to solve this serial killer on the loose because uh, yeah. the police don't want to um, kind of situation. And, yeah, that's the ground aspect. The other aspect is, you know, you randomly could just stop doing that to go to a batting range. And then <laughs> you can randomly just uh, talk, uh, try to find a panty thief. And... Oh, during every single investigation when you're exploring the world, they, you, you'll get a trophy if you find every cat that's randomly meowing during these <laughs> Batman-esque investigations nice. that I missed three of these cats because I just thought I was going fucking insane <laughs> hearing these cats meowing in my ears. Oh my and, god, I, I actually legitimately want to try this game now. That actually sounds I, really I, awesome. I think it's a blast. Um, I was convinced a friend of mine does, was doing the social media for it, and mm. she just kept talking about it, and eventually I just was like, okay, can I get this game for a decent deal? And I looked at Best Buy. I still have the Best Buy Gamers Club thing in effect. So I'm like, yeah. that's 20% <laughs> off. I have a $10 gift card. I have a $10 in points. Like that, We're bringing it down like 27 bucks for this new game. And then I, tra- and then, um, I was able to get... Um, a game that I really didn't like, I was able to get almost all the money I spent back on it for a trade in. Oh, oh nice. damn. Okay. So, so it was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just jump in. I'll stream it and see what happens. Yes. Dude, that's a, and it sounds like I'm not even bullshitting you here. I kind of want to go out here. Try it. Now, <laughs> you got it for a cheap deal. Do you, looking back at the game so far, is it worth that $60 price tag? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think based on the content, I mean, I've, I've probably dropped between the streams and stuff, I don't know, probably 12 to 15 hours in, I only, like, halfway, I, I would guess, through, like, chapter two. From what okay. I've seen, I think the game has, like, eight-plus chapters from from what I've been able to garner, mostly spoiler-free. Um, yeah, I would say it's definitely worth this. Uh, if you like brawling uh, for, like, your fighting mechanics, then yes. If you are interested in, like, a investigation kind of thing, if you're, like, looking for a story that kind of goes in two vastly different directions, but still well done... Uh, yeah, and if and, and certainly if you're a fan of the Yakuza series. Yeah, that sounds, that actually, it sounds totally freaking dope. With that, guys, gang, I've only been playing Apex. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I let you guys drone on about it, because I'm just like, I only played Apex. I played Overwatch with our good friend Nasty Boots and Eric. And so, like, for me, it's just been the same old, same old. I've had a lot of family stuff, hmm. so I haven't gotten to game as much as I would like to. But yeah, just more Apex Level Can I ask 34? you a question about Apex, Joe? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Have no, you tried the new uh, the new hero, the new legend? Yes. Uh, Watson. Gosh, 
Watson, yeah, really great late game because she could create uh, fences. So, like, Watson is all about creating a perimeter and then guarding it. So, in the late game, what you can do when the circle gets really small is you find the section of the map that the team needs to cross to get to the circle, ah. and you just gate the gate them off because it hurts them, slows them down, and then it notifies your team that someone went through the gate. Nice. That actually happened first match of the day that's how we got our first victory was it was at the edge of market and she just gated it off and then we just stood there and watched the other team try to get through this gate and so it was, it was just a perfect combination she works well with a lot of different heroes like nice. she works well with a bangalore because you can you can fence them in and then all on them you can like any offensive hero she's gonna play super well with even a character like uh goddamn the hawaiian guy Gibraltar. Uh, Gibraltar. There you go. Gibraltar here. You know, I love that guy. Yeah. God. He reminds me of the guy from Rocket Power all the time. With that, <laughs> let's get to each and every week. There's sometimes there's news stories, there's rumors, there's leaks, there's speculation. Some people call them news. We here at the Trophy Room call them goobers. Kyle, what's the first goober on the list? The oh first God, I to read this week. goober comes from IGN, written by IGN. Matt Perslow. Final Fantasy VII Remake Square Enix has no plans for other platforms other than PS4. A social media video which contained a release date for Final Fantasy VII Remake on Xbox One is an internal mistake, according to Microsoft. The Xbox Germany Facebook page posted a video that claimed Final Fantasy VII Remake was coming to Xbox One on March 3rd, 2020, the same day as the PS4 version of the game. In an update to the story, in a statement to IGN, Square Enix said, as previously announced, Final Fantasy VII Remake will be released for the PlayStation 4 on March 3rd, 2020. We have no plans for other platforms. The statement seems to, to suggest, without going as far as to use this exact phrasing, that Final Fantasy VII Remake is a PS4 exclusive. Such a situation would mean that the Xbox One release date, mistakenly shown by the Xbox Germany Facebook account, is a complete mistake, rather than a mishandled date announcement. So this is the weirdest story that I I heard last week. Um, and when it happened, I was just like, really? Right after I post the latest trophy room, how dare you? But this is a really <laughs> weird flub because the social media team goes out, not leaks, but shows this the image and this video of Final Fantasy VII Remake. And then they immediately pull it back. How does a social media team... Working from the other side, because as far as we know right now, you know, Final Fantasy Remake, it's it's a PlayStation. We don't know timed exclusive or not. But how does a social media team on Xbox get this wrong? So with that, we enter a segment I like to call. Let's get in the mind of Phil Spencer. We're going to fill <laughs> in the blanks here. So my first question to you, Josh, now we're automatically Phil Spencer. Uh, this is now an Xbox podcast. We're actually in a car. We're hitting Hopefully them all we're... right now. Yeah, no, we're getting all the ducks in a row here. Um, so you're in your car, you're Phil Spencer. How, how? Like, is this actually a flub, or do you think that this is a timed exclusive deal? I think it's a possibility that it's a timed exclusive. I think there's certainly potential there because knowing how social media groups work and PR groups work and all these kind of things, um, I know that there are... Um, a, there's a lot of uh, cogs going on. There's a lot of information going on. But that being said, I remember once when I used to work for this uh, site back in about 2013, 2014, I, I got a press release from Microsoft about this big event they were doing um, featuring all, all these this talent playing these Xbox games. And literally my job at this place, it was a shitty site that just wanted you to regurgitate stuff. So you right. just I just rewrote the press release and, and just, yeah, exactly, put it back out. I barely read it. I barely researched it. That wasn't part of the job. Um, yeah. I, I didn't know that I knew one name on that list. And I put it out there. And after I posted it, uh, the web, their, their Twitter uh, put it out. And then I started getting attacked on Twitter by fans of Total Biscuit because he was listed on the press release for an Xbox things. For those who don't know uh, uh, Total Biscuit, he was a PC person. Yeah. Um, yeah. And his and he made a tweet bashing me for whatever, whatever <laughs> you know, kind of thing as, as a yeah. dumb journalist kind of thing, not not reading stuff, which that's yeah, essentially what I was at the time. Uh, but like essentially, yeah. So I posted but the long, the short of this point of the story is. 
an official thing written by from a Microsoft press person. Not it wasn't from an outside outlet. It was yeah. directly from Microsoft sent. Claimed this person was part of this when he was literally never part of it. Wow. So how did his name end up on this press release? So mm-hmm. that's kind of what I'm feeling here is that maybe it could have been one of those things that someone somewhere in there uh, got an idea in their head or strip lied or something and it Just got passed got confused down. Confused with all mm-hmm. the like the all oh, Final Fantasy. Like, all the types of, like, remasters mm-hmm. that happen. Maybe this was, like, the Final Fantasy VIII remaster. <coughs> They're like, you know, someone types in seven, and then people are like, remaster? Do they mean remake? And they just assume? Uh-huh. Yeah. The, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long game of telephone, essentially, leading to whichever intern was responsible for the Twitter account, you know, that day kind of situation. Yeah, and but, I mean, the intern. Yeah, no, but I'm saying, like, it could have been... Yeah. It, th- so, those, I mean, obviously, those are the two sides. It's a yeah. timed exclusive, and they're getting it later, or... Honestly, it was a fuck up. Yeah. Like somebody just got the bad information. I'm leaning towards the latter because I just honestly can't imagine this final. I mean, we still don't even know this Final Fantasy VII remake really is, yeah. in all honesty. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm not envisioning that coming to other systems. But maybe it will. Yeah. How about you, Kyle? What do you think? I mean, uh, that's a really good explanation by Josh, right? Yeah. Like, do you think that this is just like a a major fuck up that's you know an intern named Eric accidentally typed Poor seven Eric. rather than eight? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely think it's a it's a mess up. It's a it's a kind of baffling mess up. Um, yeah, but like honestly, I'm kind of shocked because I thought this was coming to Xbox because I remember seeing pre orders for Xbox One version, uh, which is kind I of odd. To back me. in the hmm. day. Where it was just like play first on PlayStation. That's what yeah. I remember. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. so maybe True. they're maybe they're just thinking PS4, and then it'll come to PC eventually. But well, with, with that with that quote, I mean, I think PC would be an obvious one. But they're just yeah. like we have no systems in plan. Sure. Whatsoever. Do you think that just like a PR? You know, you know, Sony's upset. Let's just make sure everybody knows you got to play it here. And then six months down the line, we're going to release it somewhere else type of Probably. Thing. And I also kind of think, like, they want to make sure that Final Fantasy Remake is done before yeah. they before they add more to the plate. Because this yeah. is such a huge deal in the making. And hmm. I, don't, I don't think they want to add more to it. Yeah. When, they, when they're like, we have no plans at this time. Yeah. To me, it kind of I I read it as yeah, it's definitely like a PR <laughs> thing. Xbox fans, don't worry, the ten of you are gonna get it and you're gonna love it. Um, but like when it comes to but when it comes to like Square Enix, the reason why like I make that joke is when you look at games like Devil May Cry or Kingdom Hearts, you read the news stories about those games. It's like the 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 ratio between PlayStation and Xbox is just so massive. I think if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Kingdom Hearts and Devil May Cry sold, I think, like 80% on PlayStation. Like, I mean, that like, makes sense, though. It, and it makes yeah. sense. So when I'm taking a look at something like Final Fantasy and Final Fantasy VII, of all things, we immediately think PlayStation. Because it sure. makes sense. Because those games, you played it on PlayStation, just like Devil May Cry, for the most part, and uh, and you know Kingdom Hearts. So to me, I wouldn't be surprised if we see it down the line for xbox but yeah like this is a stupid flub from a social media team Mm -hmm. that needs all the positivity at the moment because xbox doesn't have the exclusives you know what i mean yeah josh what's what's going on what's going on yeah what's he doing what's he doing (laughs) it's also kind of it it's kind of um like xbox needs rpgs yeah like that's something i i think from the xbox library they're kind of missing uh, going back to oh like, yeah absolutely going back to like 360 I can think of maybe four or five at the top of my head yeah. um, Kyle's trying to be all, all I'm trying like, professional you know? <laughs> what were you doing back there Josh what happened my you wife li- my wife just randomly came in with a freshly baked piece of brioche oh, bread oh my God. and like I don't I wasn't expecting it and she's just like waving frantically behind my monitor and I'm like I'm, what just the- thinking I'm like <clears throat> did one of the kids die like what yeah, happened oh, no. Like, <laughs> no brioche bun <laughs> She's very she's very proud of her baking. I, I love so. it. So, oh no, freshly baked be- baked bread is like there you go. Oh yeah, no no no, it's, it's beautiful. Good. Yeah, mm. yeah. With that, let's get to the next <laughs> goober on the list. Kyle, what do you got for us? Oh, would you like to name the, the segment before oh, we get yeah, into yeah. it? Yeah. So with that, every time we talk about Gearbox, we have a little segment called Kyle. Why would you fuck me on this? 
Uh, this comes from Joseph Yaden over at PS Lifestyle. Gearbox Joseph. is committed to supporting crossplay in Borderlands 3, but it won't be available at launch. With massive titles like Call of Duty Modern Warfare getting full PC console crossplay at launch, Borderlands fans have been wondering about Borderlands 3's inclusion of the feature. Gearbox Software CEO Randy Pitchford publicly stated that the upcoming Borderlands 3 will not include crossplay alongside the game's launch. This comes by way of a tweet from Pitchford in which he cleared up any misconceptions about the announcement that will be made pertaining to Borderlands 3 on July 16th. Randy's quote, some folks may be speculating that this thing tomorrow may be about crossplay. Tomorrow's thing is awesome, but not about crossplay. But good news, we are committed to supporting crossplay for Borderlands 3 with our partners as soon as practicable after launch. So, uh, yeah, they, they were teasing like this little announcement thing a couple of days back. Mm-hmm. Turns out it's just a trailer. It's it a was cool a trailer. Really weird trailer. Did you like <laughs> I didn't. I wasn't a fan of it. Oh, I it, it's... It, well, you're not a fan of Borderlands. You haven't really played them. But so that, it's just for the fans. That oozed like, Borderlands personality. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it was just like a happy together uh, and then mixed with, yeah, they're all shooting guns and prancing yeah. around. Mm-hmm. With that, that's really that's a really, really juicy quote because it's for the first time Randy Pitchford is jumping out in front of controversy. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> in the first time, literally ever, saying like, hey guys, listen, this announcement, you may think it's cross-play. It's definitely not. We're working on it with our partners. With that said, Unless, unless it's about... a real long setup to a magic trick. <laughs> oh, you could just be really setting up a huge magic trick that's coming up soon. Who knows? Yeah, at medieval times in all places. <laughs> but like, we're getting, we're getting Call of Duty cross-play confirmed right we got the big Fortnite. we got uh rocket league we got dauntless what are the chances here of of the crossplay reality hitting borderlands 3 because i know a lot of questions leading up to borderlands 3 launches we're seeing all these big games announce crossplay. why not borderlands 3 so my first question to you i'm gonna go to kyle sure. is are we going to see some type of crossplay? what is it gonna be when are we going to see it Oh, I, I think absolutely crossplay will come to Borderlands Three. I think it's one of the perfect titles for it. Um, mm-hmm. it you know, just hop in, get some loot, shoot some people. Like it, yeah. it is, it is the key playing with friends type of game. Um, I, I would assume that they'll probably do like PS4, PC at first, uh, mm. just because I still feel like PlayStation is kind of standoffish when it comes to Xbox and oh, crossplay yeah. thing. So I, I think they'll shoot for that first, and then eventually, hopefully, they'll just put everyone together. Now, Josh, you, you, you echoed that statement. Do you feel like if Sony puts it towards PC, PS4, and then they'll kind of like wipe their hands with it and go, huh, look, we did it, and then kind of try to walk away from it? Or do you think we're going to see some console v. Cos- console uh, crossplay? I mean, I think we're going to end up with just – Whatever consoles Borderlands coming to, I think it'll it'll end up having cross play across all of them. I just think Sony still kind of is is standoffish about the whole process. They still like to just put their feet down and try to be like, no, well, you know, I guess we're gonna okay, I guess we're gonna do cross play. You know, and it's it's with PC and it's not yeah. with Xbox. They yeah. they still try to fight against the changing of you know the changing times and stuff like that. Uh, I feel like Sony's gonna finally get their head out of their ass fully, probably sometime next year, and just give up. Yeah this whole yeah. thing and just accept but yeah. i think we're right now for the 2019 games we're still in the sony really just trying to be the platform versus yeah. being part of a community mm-hmm. yeah so what are your thoughts on crossplay when it comes to like sony's reluctance on it is it do you do you see because for me i see it as I listen. I want crossplay as much as everybody else. Last summer, when the whole Fortnite fiasco, we're ba- we're banging our feet, right? Like, let's mm-hmm. do this. Let's get this uh, crossplay for everybody business. But as a business, you have to look at like you know, you have to look at your numbers and go, okay, well, if we let everybody play with each other, how does that affect our bottom line? You sure. know what I mean? So, what <laughs> what is your stance? How do you feel on Sony's reluctance? Do you think it's rightfully so or you're just like come on let's do it already i mean from a business from a purely bottom line financial perspective yeah they're doing quote unquote the right thing because i mean i have friends who 
will always buy these kind of games. They'll buy, they buy Destiny, Destiny 2, they, you know, Borderlands. They buy them on PC, guaranteed. But they have specific friends who play only on PS4, so they literally buy that, that you know, the PC copy because that's available. That has usually has an open architecture kind of thing with cross-play to Xbox kind of thing. <laughs> but So that takes care of one whole entire market, but then they buy the PS4 copy for that specific two friends mm-hmm. that only play on PS4. So I mean, that's what yes, I do with Apex. Yes. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. Apex, I'm just like, okay, so where's my main team at? And unfortunately, it's with Xbox. So I have to go play with Luke, and I got to go play with uh, Hometown, or else I like I don't turn on my Xbox, right? But, <laughs> yeah, like, I... I hate the I hate the notion that the customer has to pay extra just because someone doesn't want to play nice. You know? Agreed. And yeah. with that, there's a lot of systems in Borderlands, if I'm not mistaken. Like, it doesn't have an in-game chat functionality to it, right? Am I wrong? not that I can remember? Yeah, yeah. So there are like party systems that they have to put in place and probably have to make some type of like gearbox account for all type of deal. Mm-hmm. So it it isn't. It isn't as easy, I think, as a lot of people want to perceive it as. I think it is a lot of hard work, and I don't think we're going to see it at least in 2018, but this would be awesome, and it's awesome to see Randy Pitchford doing something mm-hmm. sensible for once. Yeah. I, I also think their, <laughs> yeah. one of their main focuses with Borderlands 3 is that, I'm trying to remember the actual phrase, the loot instancing thing that they're really yeah. pushing. So like I that might throw a, like a cog in the wheel of like or or, or what the plans ruin their plans for yeah, crossplay because how is that going to work with different systems different consoles like yeah. that might be something where they're going to have to maybe look into yeah I got you yeah. I feel you dude I'm still I'm I'm down I'm down for Borderlands three man I'm yeah. still excited it's awesome again I'm still wait. trying to talk myself. Going like, listen, just don't let one guy be the reason why you don't play this game. Yeah. Though he probably steals from his own people. <laughs> I need to support those people. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, there's sure. still an awesome community there of really talented people that need that support. And again, awesome to see that they're on the bandwagon here. It's awesome to see more devs go go and talk about crossplay as something they all really want. You mm-hmm. know, we echo it here all the time. It's it's just common sense at this point. Let's get this going. With that, Kyle, what's up? Let's get to the flash news. Flash news. First bit of flash news comes from Stephen Tailby over at Push Square. PSVR shooter Blood and Truth is getting a free demo tomorrow on PlayStation Store. The demo will let you play the opening mission of the game. Infiltrate an enemy compound, blast your way out of danger in an in an intense rooftop shootout, and take part in a car chase in this gameplay heavy slice of the full game. What's more, London Studio is planning to release an update later this month that'll include some fun post-game extras. Oh my god, I beat my mic there. <laughs> Josh, have you? Do you have PSVR? Are you interested in VR in general? Oh, I mean, generally, I'm very interested in VR. I bought a Vive a while ago. Um, that we foolishly, for an extra life thing, moved to a different room and then never mm. <laughs> set up in the office again. And now there's like the Vive sitting there. There's one controller. I think the rest of it is in a storage <laughs> locker waiting for the studio to finish. But yeah, I like I like um, I like VR. Um, I've considered getting a PSVR a few different times during the sales. Uh, yeah, I like I like everything about the concept, and I like That's most good. things I played. Yeah. Now with that, going to you, Kyle. Yeah. Um, you weren't able to play Blood and Truth. Not yet. I get paid tomorrow, though, so who knows? Is this is this <gasps> your ticket in? Is this oh, one hundred percent. This this yeah. is something that I'm I'm super interested in. I can't wait to actually experience yeah. Dude, it for sure. London Studio, they're so stupidly talented. And Josh, let me tell you something. If you were to get a PSVR, this is the game to do it because it That's makes what I've you heard. feel like a crooked 007. Like it is so freaking fun it's awesome to see again them also doing post patch and post game stuff as well so there you go demo out uh tomorrow so (coughs) as of this uh podcast go out there download this game give them a shout out as well because they're working so freaking hard so freaking talented absolutely next one kyle on the list this also comes from steven tailby over over at push push square Uh, he's been busy this week uh, oh, Super Monkey matter. Ball Banana Blitz HD officially announced for PS4. It's actually releasing in the West slightly earlier than in Japan. You'll be monkeying around with this updated re-release on 
October 29th, 2019. Banana Blitz HD features revamped controls, updated visuals, online leaderboards, and a brand new minigame decathlon mode that sees you play 10 minigames in a row. It'll be available for $39.99 US American dollars. Man, I've been waiting for this, lining up this joke since I put it out here. Uh, you know, when you say that people are putting kids in cages, nobody cares. But when you say monkeys are in balls, everybody <sighs> loses their minds, right? I've seen so many people mm-hmm. freak out about Super Monkey Absolutely. Ball. Absolutely. And I just, I don't understand why. Like, I remember having the old iPhone game, and I mean, like, the original iPhone game. But other than that, like, it was just, like, using the gyroscope, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. Is anybody a Super Monkey Ball fan? I've never played one. Nope. No, Josh? No, you never? I've never played one. No. Uh, yeah. I don't even know what this thing's about. <laughs> Other than I, monkeys are in balls. I will say I've, I've watched friends in college play. Okay. Um, and I've seen it played, yeah. Yeah, the, the fact that there's online leaderboards, and I think from what I remember <laughs> is trying to get to the end as fast as possible. Okay. That kind of hook kind of intrigues me. But I'm not gonna run out and 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 For buy this bucks. day one. Yeah, no. Forty bucks, Jesus! All right, what's the last bit of the Flash news? This one comes from Cass Marshall over at Polygon. The Summer Games are back in Overwatch with new skins. The event will run from July 16th through August 5th and offers a host of new skins, emotes, highlight intros, and other collectible cosmetics. In addition, last year's cosmetics are all back at a discounted price. Lucio Ball also returns, offering Rocket League-style soccer action for players in both casual and competitive queues. Yep, yep. There's a Hunky Hanzo skin that everybody's lusting over. (laughs) And I was just like, let me check this out. Let me see this Hunky Hanzo. And yeah, dude, let me tell you something. If he was real, I'd I'd touch a peck. I'd be like, consensually. (laughs) Just one peck, not not two pecks, just one? What one peck? Like, I I hate to say that I'm I'm attracted to Hanzo, but I'm attracted to Hanzo. (laughs) You know, what I mean? <laughs> uh, Josh, do you play Overwatch? Does this get you get you going to jump back in if you don't? Uh, d- 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 second question first. No, uh, first question. Uh, I played Overwatch a, f- a lot when it first yeah. released. That first Same summer, way. I was all over it, and then I don't remember what happened. Like literally, I went from hours a day playing that with people to just one day, just zero interest, and I. Yep. Every now and again, I'm like, I really do want. I get like a weird urge to play it, but eh, unless unless I had like friends who just were super into it and just could convince me, I'm just yeah. I'm not gonna jump solo into that yeah. again. If if the rumored single player Overwatch game comes out, definitely I'll jump oh, yeah. back into it. Oh, that's but, a like, rumor. I didn't know that. That's a rumor. That Ooh, excites this me. This BlizzCon. Mm-hmm. This BlizzCon. Uh, but like, yeah, I, I same here. I played it for months, like at almost close to a year. On PC of all things, gross. But like, and also like, I'll play it on PS4 if like Nasty Boots on Discord will be like, "Hey, you want to play with us?" And we'll get the the Bad Vic Clan in there. But other than that, meh, meh, not even mm-hmm. Hunky Hansa is gonna move the needle for <laughs> little bad bit. So with that, let's get to our last bit of news, Kyle. This comes from John Wilds of IGN. GameStop to create new store concept offer retro gaming. It's no secret that GameStop has had a rough few years financially. They saw a third quarter loss of nearly half a billion dollars last November, even after selling Spring Mobile for a cool $700 million. Recently, it had to stop searching for a new buyer with its stocks plummeting by over 25%. Obviously, something needs to change, and today GameStop announced that its new business saving strategy is turning stores into unique experiences. The new direction is part of a partnership with colossal marketing company, RGA and revolves around GameStop's long-held desire to reaffirm its place in video game culture. GameStop's quote, Together, GameStop and RGA are developing and piloting new and streamlined physical store concepts, introducing new ways for gamers to try new titles before they buy them. Read the announcement before going on to say that unique store concepts that offer things like competitive sessions in homegrown e-leagues to locations that sell strictly retro gaming software and hardware are just some of the ideas that they're going to trial in new concept stores. So this is actually, um, they have one of these already uh, where I live. Oh, really? Surprisingly enough. The competitive scene? Oh, yeah, Mm. for sure. They already have that. But I'll, I'll talk a bit, bit about it. Uh, I want to hear your thoughts on yeah. this first, Kyle. 
Yeah, so uh, we've mentioned on the show before, uh, both myself and Joe, we b- both worked at GameStop. Oh, yeah. Disclosure. You know, it's whatever. Been, it's been long enough. Um, it, it's... I've worked there, too. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, Sorry. <laughs> this is interesting to me. Um, mm. When they say, like, specific unique store concepts, like a store that only sells retro stuff, yeah. Like that's that's su- super interesting. Then what's going to happen to all the modern and new stuff? Is it just not going to be there in is, the GameStop? Maybe they shift it over somewhere else. Is it just going to be like a smaller section of that store? Yeah. Like it, it's it it's sad to me cuz like I am a physical media person and I know that game GameStops are going to end at some point. Mm-hmm. Um Well, with that said yeah. though, like this is them trying to they're trying to revive themselves. Think? Yeah, but do yeah. you not think this is going to work out? Because you're saying it's eventually going to end. De- depending on what are the types of like unique store concepts there are. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, if they're all retro stuff, which is great. I love retro stuff. But, like, is that really going to keep them in the game when you can just go – many people to go on eBay or, right. or, or, you know, the – Or to a mom and pop shop. Absolutely. Like, yeah. what, what makes going to this unique retro gaming GameStop – well, again, like yeah. maybe you want that Super Nintendo, right? But like sure. when we go to the other side of the aisle, esports are becoming really big. Yeah, for sure. Josh, do you think that like esports could re- rejuvenate GameStop in a way or are they going about it the wrong way? I think I think it has the pe- uh, I think it has the potential. I think a lot of what they're doing with the new store concept idea and everything. Um I mean, they were a company that's absolutely just been hemorrhaging. It's it's been the constant watching them fall down and fall further down, and you know, a lot of us who were abused working there, kind of just waiting for mm-hmm. if, you know to spit on the grave. In all honesty, and you know, it's been it's been a lot of that for a while now. But this is, yeah. I feel like this whole idea right now is one of the oh, first dude. smart ideas they have had mm-hmm. in a long time. Oh, really? Okay, okay. What makes it what makes it that like what? <coughs> What pivot do you like? Do you like the retro scene? Do you like the esports type of lean? What what, you, what gets you optimistic when you look at this? I think it's the retro side of it. Um, I mean, GameStop as it is was already primarily for a lot of people a place to get traded in, you know, used games. That's what they themselves have been half-assed trying to fully pivot themselves into for years, claiming that that's their most important demographic, but never actually showcasing it and kind of treating the retro stuff that they get in like crap. Mm -hmm. So now that they're actually kind of making a a place that's specifically devoted to it, I don't know. It, it, at least on paper sounds like it has a potential to, um, at least keep them afloat for a little while longer. I, I, Honestly, I don't know if that company has any more has the legs or the clout to actually keep themselves completely above water. Yeah. But at the very least, I think it's a delay. It'll probably delay the inevitable. And see, that's the thing too. Like if 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 I'm GameStop, right? Like I don't want to delay the inevitable. I want it to stop. Mm-hmm. And I think when we look at something like e leagues, like do we see GameStop maybe take like I'm not. Uh, very loosely, and you're gonna see how much I know about sports. Like a Foot Locker, <laughs> you walk in there and you're like, "Oh, there's the latest jer- like Shroud jersey." Yeah. Here's your Doctor Disrespect jersey that's ironically in the bathroom. Like, oh, <laughs> here, 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 like you know what I'm saying? Like, here's yeah. a I don't know, God, name another racist white person, a PewDiePie jersey. Like, there's <laughs> just stuff there, you know, for your f- favorite streamer or your favorite e league. Like, Overwatch League is huge. That's right? that's so, definitely what I I thought of when when I read that was like they have sections of. Like we're in New York, so like the New York team jerseys would be there, or, or yeah. and like the, the the gear that they use would also be like prominently featured. See, that would be dope if you're just like, hey, if you're a Phillies, you know, if you're in if if you're in fi- flip, flip flip Philadelphia, that was a <laughs> really bad always sunny reference. But like, yeah, if you're in Philadelphia, then you get the the Phillies, you know. Um, like jersey and stuff mm-hmm. like that like depending on your region you have that thing that's a pretty dope idea but yeah. i think really that's where they they're i think the smartest in is if you stay in esports and you try to do some type of thing with merchandise because i don't i don't see retro as being the the thing that keeps you afloat i actually think it's the thing that's going to run them out of business if they hmm. if they are so adamant on pre-owned well that inventory is finite right that consumer base already doesn't trust you and they already have like 
I'm assuming mom and pop shops right there that they are loyal to. So now you have just a different type of business tactic to go after these stores that I don't think GameStop really has left in them. I don't think they have fight in them anymore, you know? Mm. Um, but with that, yeah, I don't see this fixing GameStop's woes. I actually look at it and I'm just like, man, I'm hearing the Lannister theme, man. Like, <laughs> it is, it's Dunzos. I really do feel that way. So with that, Josh, I forgot to warn you. Are you holding on to something? Kyle, oh. are you holding on I'm to something? I'm always holding on to something. All right, cool. Because hey. here we prepare the drop. Each and every week, the latest and greatest in PlayStation drops on the PlayStation storefront each and every week. The problem is that there are way too many games to list, so we each have to narrow it down to one game each. With that... Kyle, what game did you pick this week? <laughs> I'm a little turned on, by the way, just gonna say. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he kills it with that voice. Uh, yeah. my also, it... dude, I'm gonna be honest right now, I think yeah. my house has turned into fucking Noah's Ark. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't it hear is, it, so it, okay, that's good. Well, you're just gonna fl- you're just gonna you're gonna melt and then exactly. float away. You're just so gonna like, join the rain. Float here, yeah. Uh, Kyle, my pick, pick this week is a game called 198X. Uh, welcome okay. to suburbia, just outside the city, sometime yeah. in 198X. Uh, this is the journey of Kid, a teenager stuck between the limitations of innocent youth and the obligations of inevitable adulthood. The story unfolds when Kid discovers the local arcade, finding new worlds and new meaning in video games. I thought this was super relatable. It's like a cool 8-bit style. Um, It's got like a a Telltale-like story to it. Um, The trailer seems super intriguing, and I like the whole vibe of it. So, yeah, I'm excited to check that one out. Yeah. Yeah, that looks dope. That looks dope. Josh, what's your pick? Oh, let me pull that up. So my pick uh, that I was going with was i just lost in my place uh so i was thinking um uh, etherborn it's a game that i i'm trying to find so it's uh etherborn is an elegant leap in the gravity puzzle genre an el- environmental puzzle platformer built on exploring and understanding gravity shifting structures travel through beautiful and exotic locations where each level is an organic puzzle to explore manipulate and shift gravity on in order to decipher the way forward I can't read this today. Dude, anyway. not to worry. It's all me right now. <laughs> my, my my brain just went in directions. No, um, I got a preview of this game a little while back. It just um, <coughs> the, it's the it's it's a purely an art style thing. I'm not usually a puzzle platformer kind of yeah, you know kind here. of person, but sometimes a visual of a game, sometimes the audio just like pulls out to me. Um, and while I haven't had a chance to try the review level of it, mm-hmm. the review uh, copy of it, it just pulls at me a little bit in, the, in that in that nice little fun way so this is one of the I'll games give it, i'll give it to that during the kind of funny game showcase that really stood mm-hmm. out to me a lot yep. it's like the mc escher painting where you kind of like Ooh. go all over the place yeah it looks too cool all right let me get my voice ready for this one my pick this week is telefrag vr Telefrag VR is a hellishly fast-paced competitive arena shooter with visceral movement and combat mechanics inspired by a classic FPS. They can't say it legally, but it's definitely Quake. As a space gladiator, dash, run, shoot, and teleport around unique arenas that feature impossibly you know, impossible geometric... Oh, God damn it! Geometry. Where there's no right side up and where death can come from any direction yeah no this this game looked dope uh it literally looks like quake like the original 90s quake and i'm on board it's it looks crazy i'm actually gonna hit these devs up and see if i can't snag myself a a review copy because this is awesome and damn vr multiplayer games i want to see how this works (laughs) so there you go that's been the drop and so you might be asking yourself where the hell did josh go what happened to the recording? Why is there suddenly video on this end? There's no time to explain, but I think Andrew House just hacked my emails mm-hmm. because we're right at the Andrew House segment. And That's then, karma. <laughs> do you think, wait, do you think Andrew House has the power of the fucking ocean? The seven seas? Listen, <laughs> because... he, he knows a guy. <laughs> Because what happened? We're in the middle of a heat wave, and then all of a sudden, yeah. like, like my phone rings. It's just like expect 
torrential downpour, like flood warnings in effect from two o'clock in the afternoon till 10 at night. And literally halfway through this fucking podcast, I'm hearing the fucking wind shaking the house and everything rattling the fucking roof and shit. And I'm just sitting here trying to keep my fucking cool. Then all of a sudden, bam, Dunzo's. I'm, it's just like I'm living in the Middle Ages again. It's black <laughs> everywhere. And then, and like, from my point of view, Joe yeah. had his mouth open <laughs> like that, and it was just frozen on screen. <laughs> and both me and our lovely guest Josh, which yeah. thank you, Josh, for coming. Yeah, we were like, oh no, he got snapped or something. Like it, it I was, got it was fucking bad. blipped. Yeah, dude. Holy shit! So first and foremost, shout out to Josh Silverman, Calcod Podcast. Go nope, check him out. Way. No. Con Cal Pod. You know what? You think I'd learn it the third time, right? <laughs> you know? Dyslexia. Constantly calibrating podcasts. Yes. Look them up there. Look him up at mixer.com slash bear punch or mixer.com slash con cal. That's where they do the podcast. All right? He's a great man. Absolutely. He took his time to come here and do this show. So please hit him up with a follow at bear punch on Twitter. Tell him how much you appreciate him this episode. He was fucking terrific now with Absolutely. that we don't have a lot of time left because no, who knows we're in the eye of the storm yeah we're in the eye of the storm maybe the storm's <laughs> deciding it's gonna come back for round fucking two <laughs> so let's do this each and every week you could drop in your questions at ps trophy room on twitter or at the casa de bad bit discord server or you know what fuck you andrew house we're still doing it you could control the goddamn seven seas antarctica Boom! whatever there it goes you, it's over <laughs> you can send your mail to andrew house i'll go each and every week i'll fly over there i have so many flyer miles it's ridiculous i'll fly over to andrew house's house i'll steal his fucking mail <laughs> rain or shine kyle rain or shine so with that <clears throat> i so badly want you to freeze again right after that because it'd be so perfect then, then I'll start believing in a deity. He's just like, I, Andrew House, control the power of the weather. He's like, Storm. <laughs> and now I'm just picturing Andrew House in Storm's outfit, like all scantily oh, clad. Oh, and oh boy. It's kind of hot, dude. It's kind of hot. <clears throat> <clears throat> Our first question comes from Robert Amato. What do you guys think of the recent Division 2 state of the game announcements? I'm looking forward to the changes with the crafting and possibly helping me complete my builds. As always, thank you. Uh, thank you guys for all you do. Thank you, Robert, for writing yeah, in. Dude, you. that's an awesome, terrific question. I know a bit what you're saying. Um, they like to be, you know, the division devs have been really on point with talking to their audience, at least from what I've seen, right? Guy looking outside, looking in. They've done a terrific job of, even when it's the bad news, like delaying something, they're always talking about the game with their community. So for me... I love the state of the game. I really think that's a it's an awesome way for the devs to communicate directly with their fan base and Especially talk to with them. Like a games as service model. Yeah, terrific. Yeah. Like I I love it. What do you What do you think about it, Kyle? I, I'm I'm all for developers just keep that messaging out and, and be like, listen, we got this stuff coming. Yeah. We've heard you. We listen to your feedback. Just, to me, that just means they care. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and 100%. that's what I really like about it, too. I know they just announced some stuff for episode one, I believe, as well. So, yeah, I really like the way they talk to their communities. More devs really ought to be like that. With that, Dave Atrido. No, did I mess it up? At Atrido. I got it. I nailed it. Dave, you're going to write in and go, Joe, you fucking nailed it last week, the pronunciation of my name. Holy shit. Uh, with the ever-increasing pricing of DLC going forward and games with nearly reaching $100, will we ever go back to having a complete game being sold to us? <laughs> Funny joke. Even the increasing the base cost of, let's say, $70. Or are we going to see uh, extra additional content from here on out? So, Dave, that's a great question. Uh, I'm very skeptical. We'll ever see. No, like we're never going to see yeah. a game sold to us in the full way ever again. Like th it I, works. Yeah. yeah. Like absolutely. It just does. And, I'm, yeah. And, and from their side of things, like the reason why they do DLC is to prolong the life of the game and keep it mm -hmm. in everyone's for in, in their mind share. Really? Yeah. So like, I, 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 I'd be shocked if we see a game like, like, 
Borderlands, for example, have all everything all together before releasing instead of yeah. having these DLC seasons. I mean, we just talked about the Division Two, right? And like, yeah, for sure, how the Division Two. We just talked about them talking to the the community. We're talking about DLC for the game uh, a year from now from you know from now so now we're not going to see games that like increase over 70 dollars also i do agree with the big uh, evil corporations when they say listen 60 dollars that has not moved in over 10 plus years like even yeah. with inflation and all that like games should theoretically be more expensive but yeah. they're not and i do think you know unpopular opinion i get it but I do think that is with the implementation of things like loot boxes and season passes and battle passes and whatnot. It's just the way that you go about those things that make the difference. So like, I don't care if I'm paying $60 for a game and there's a battle pass. Cause I prefer the battle pass method of DLC more than anything else. Because yeah, you do see in games like Fortnite, games like apex legends, games like division two, those things carry over for years on out. It, it helps, you know, get that community more content and gives those developers a stable income to keep creating the content they want to make. So yep. yeah. Yeah. That's, that's all I got for you there. And then <clears throat> the man that makes all of our aw awesome art, Adam Leonard writes, Hey, I know that guy referring to Josh. Ask him if he thinks I'm handsome. Um, Josh isn't here right now because of Poseidon and the seven seas uh, and Andrew house. Uh, so I'm just going to say it's a firm. Eh. <laughs> no, no, Adam, Adam's a handsome man, you know? I see, I see the photo of him. I'm just like, oh, he's a, yeah, what a lucky <laughs> wife. Now we go to our Discord questions. Oh, we, we skipped one, Jeff. Oh, did we do? Did, did we really? Antonio brings the hype. <gasps> oh, you, you, you know what? You read it because obviously I'm missing out. <laughs> you got it. Which next standalone superhero game yeah. will make a splash the way Spider Man PS4 did? Right now, the focus seems to be on team, out, team ups. Who is badass and compelling enough to run solo? Antonio's vote, a good Green Lantern game. Man, how dare he make a water reference <laughs> at a time like this, Antonio? How dare you, sir? How <laughs> dare you? Um, have you given this any thought? What type of superhero yeah. game would you like to see? We saw Spider-Man. Uh, I would love a really good Captain America game. Okay. Uh, that would be great, like a solo cap game. Uh, oddly enough, I think Ant-Man and the way, like, using the size and you with the levels i think would be really really cool a katamari game but as ant-man <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i really also think a really good wonder woman game would be really cool too yeah we talked about this a few months back yeah wonder woman that would be a dope game absolutely to make. yeah absolutely so what superhero would i like to see um i want to see <laughs> let's see let's see you know what? I haven't watched the movie yet, so I don't know. And I don't know much about this character. But let's do Shazam, dude. Let's get a Shazam Ooh, game. That's a good one. Because you're, like, we can make it in, in a Life is Strange type of scenario where you're a kid in high school and you get to choose your actions, your consequences. What you do in school impacts what you do outside of school as Shazam. Cool. You know? That's dope. Ooh, Joseph, the game designer out there. That's that's <laughs> Yeah. I like it. With that, let's go to the Discord questions. You mind reading this next question for me, Kyle? Absolutely. Nathan hits us up over on Casa de Bad Bit over on Discord. Did the music genre come back too early with Rock Band 4 and Guitar Hero Live? I was playing Beat Saber last night and thought to myself, how cool Rock Band VR could be? Mm -hmm. Putting you on stage in front of different venues and amounts of players <laughs> as you got better. Well, here's the thing, Nathan. Yeah. Tell there tell is me. a Rock Band VR game. No, uh, it's what? only for Oculus Rift. Oh. Or and it, it it's a real it's a big bummer because that is something that I would love love to play as a major yeah. rock band player. Is it a straight up rock band VR? It's straight up rock band VR. Like you can they they changed how guitar works, but they have the classic mode where you can you have the track coming down the screen. So, like, wait, it, so this is a Harmonix game? Yeah, one hundred percent. It came out a couple years ago. Um, what? Yeah, a lot of people forgot about it. Uh, you can look it up on YouTube. Uh, it's definitely a real thing. I don't believe you right now. I think you're um, lying to me right they, now. They even had, like, it worked with the regular Defender 
rock band they came with, and it had like this Holy little shit, holder. Holy shit, you're not lying. I'm not lying. Why would I lie? I uh, they, it came with like a little holder where you put like the Oculus uh, wireless controller in, like over mm-hmm. the, the neck of the guitar. So that like that's how it, it, it tracked the movement of the plastic guitar that everyone uses. Um, it looked cool. It's something that I wish was so- something I could play on you my could play PSVR. Chop Suey on it. Wake oh up! my god. Uh, but like for me, it would be with drums. Like I, I want to play the drums in, yeah. in VR. Um, but I agree with you. I do think it came back a little too early. Rock Band 4 was a kind of a disappointment for me uh, as much as I loved two mm. and three. Like that is why I own a drum set is because of rock band. Yeah. And uh guitar hero live was a really cool concept, Joe. Did you ever play that game? No, no, uh, I never so played rock. Band it's live. basically, it's, it's real life FMV. Like you are playing in front of real people and you look to the side. It's kind of like an on track camera yeah. type thing. Dude, and that's you're, what you're, I was thinking. You're playing with real people, and you're you're kicking ass, and it, it's it's a really cool feeling. That would be something that would be awesome in VR. Um, but I do think it came back too early. I wish it, it, it kind of died on the spot, which sucks. But fingers crossed that harmonics so back. Some suicide. <laughs> I shy when angels deserve to wake up. <laughs> I love that song, dude. I'm gonna slap into it, dude. Uh, yeah, no. When I'm thinking of, I did not think this was real. So that's dope, and I immediately now want an Oculus, even if it's yeah. just 21 games. Um, but they got Food Fighters in here. Mean? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, and Mr. Brightside. Oh my god, oh, yeah. dude. Yeah. They oh got my god, songs. You know what they did in the dark? What? Oh my god. Yeah, no, that's dope. That's what I was thinking too. Like you're out in the crowd and everybody's like rocking and you're just looking and like you're playing the guitar in VR, but like you look down and you're actually mm-hmm. seeing like how the how the thing would actually be played. I, I think in rock band VR they, it also gives you bonus points if you headbang. What? Like it tracks your headbanging, yeah. Oh my <laughs> god, do that ahead of its time. <clears throat> ahead of its time. I could I could sit here here for ninety minutes talking just my yeah, that got me. That got me where I needed to go. The most famous Seamus I ever met in my entire life gives us questions so nice we decided to give him a spot here on the show twice. One, what do you guys think of the jokes about the Nintendo Switch looking like the Vita? And two, do you think Sony would ever consider uh, trying the handheld market again? One. Okay, yeah. The Nintendo Switch Lite looks exactly like a ps vita it does it's scary <laughs> i love it yeah uh two i do think sony will, will hop back in yeah. i don't know when but like why not yeah i think you know you're gonna I mean? see them with like a handheld accessory i definitely right. think it's it's all it's streaming it's the future man mm-hmm. those azure servers we're going to see a doohickey <laughs> that you put your phone into. You got the sacred symbols, the joy sticks, and all that jazz in there. I know there was like a patent for like an Xbox mobile controller, and it looked mm. dope. And um, yeah, so like I would like to see that in PlayStation form in, in terms of uh, the handheld market ever again. I don't think you're going to see a big traditional handheld from them. Uh, I really think Sony, they, they have they're trying the vr market they're they're seeing if that's working and it's you know eh, as much as we love vr we got to be truthful it's kind of wavering psvr is doing good but it doesn't see the growth that a lot of companies want it to see yet uh so depending on if they st- stick around they want to focus on one major platform that's just a playstation platform where you play all your games everywhere so uh with that the jokes about the nintendo switch looking like a vita yeah, it looks like a more squared Vita. But can I kind of say this? And I need to get this off my chest. Um, I actually think the Switch Lite's dope. Okay. I think, I, Yeah, I think it's a dope console. Yeah. And I don't understand like the people that are hung up on, Ooh, but it doesn't go to your TV, and I can't put it in the dock. What do you mean? Can, I have not played my Switch on my TV since i bought it really yeah I, it's strictly all handheld for me so for, for me like i play like i play pedro on tv like there's some games i definitely play on the tv but for the most part it's my vita too yeah i consider it that way uh a, a lot and i think the people that complain about it 
are usually playing it on the TV. And I think <coughs> if you look at it, it's a brand. The Switch is a brand. What are you going to hear? Okay, smart asses making your jokes, okay? Come at me, bro. I'll fight each and every one of you dorks. <laughs> uh, I get it. It doesn't plug into the TV. But what are you going to call this console then if it plays Switch games? Switch is the most successful Nintendo brand since what? Like the Wii. The Wii? The 3DS, arguably? Not sure. really? You could put it there? So, yeah. like, why wouldn't you want your new console to be associated with your most successful brand? Yeah. And on top of that, uh, the light versions of all your consoles, when it, when it's with the light at the end, like the DSi light sold the best out of all your other DSs. So there's yeah. two brands that you can market this handheld to. No duh, it's going to be called the Switch Lite because it's math. It works. So I really don't get the the hung up on a fucking name, and you gotta like I saw so many people. I'm not like trying to like like just one person. I know I'm venting here, but like, God, Nintendo people, you're excited about cardboard, but then this, you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know if people want this. I don't know, dude. You wanted cardboard, you know what I mean? Joe, I I love a good Mr. Bad Bit rant, but I don't want Poseidon to come down on you again. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Sorry. It's just stupid. It's a brand. It's branding. Yeah. Get over it. It's a hundred bucks less. That's why it doesn't plug into your TV. Let's be honest. You were using it anyway. You know? But uh, real talk though. And I, again, yeah. we'll go back to PlayStation. I promise. Sure. Are you interested in this console or are you like, nay? Oh, 100%. Like, I, yeah. I might even trade in my OG Whoa. Switch for the light. You're selling out. Because I'm strictly out. handheld. So yeah. why. And I know, no, again, we're getting back to PlayStation. The reason why I would consider it is if I'm mostly, I mean, I am mostly handheld, but like, you know, let's just say I got a job in the city. It's a perfect train game. I know Sean Capri was talking about perfect train console. You throw it in your bag, you forget about it. And it looks like, the, I'm sorry. I know I'm like reminiscing here. It looks like the Vita. So give yeah. me it. Put it in my veins. Uh, next on the list. Oh God. You know what we did accidentally while we were doing that whole question? I accidentally activated the Winter Gamer. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. We do this every week. Why? I know. I forget. I'm just like race car, train track, road, <laughs> hospital. <gasps> I went and activated him again. Oh, my God. Uh, should Sony try to have a... <laughs> sorry. Try to have more of their exclusive games with VR functions uh, if it done correctly? Or should they leave the PS4 games to be uh, separate? I think separate. Yeah. Yeah. But equal. Uh because like like the Winter Gamer said, like, yeah. do they want exclusive games with VR function if it's done correctly? And I don't yes. want some half-assed VR component mm -mm. in like an Uncharted game. I, yeah. I don't want that. If they're gonna do something in Uncharted, go all out. I think the only one that kind of sort of worked, but not really, was the Tomb Raider. Rise mm -hmm. of Tomb Raider had a VR thing with it. Okay. Um, which kind of sort of worked, but they didn't really figure out movement and it left a lot of people sick with motion sickness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm with you. I want, I want it separate. I want fully realized VR stuff from the ground up. Yeah. And, and I, I'm also thinking back to the Vita. Remember the golden abyss, right? Yeah. Scratch the back of the Vita, smell it. And it's reveals the map. <laughs> um, that's stupid. Just give me a game. That's really good. Like, you know, worth playing. So Yeah. Yeah, just, again, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to see Astrobot outside VR. True. Right? Like, I wouldn't want to see, like, Blood and Truth isn't special out of VR, but in VR, it is. And seeing Sony pour money into those projects is awesome. And, I mean, mm -hmm. you see them do it with games like Resident Evil 7, but they're still really good fleshed out experiences. So, yeah, no. V VR, again, separate I, them to different I mean, ecosystems. I mean, going off of that, like, when I played Trover... Uh, you could play that not in VR. Yeah. But it was not good. Yeah. It, that was designed for VR. So, mm -hmm. like, I can't imagine a game that has, like, attack on VR mode. Like, that's not what we're here for. That's not going to help VR at all yeah. either. Yeah. You want the good experiences. You don't want to dilute it with. Yeah, I get it. I get where we're coming from. Uh, would you like to read the next question? Because i gotta, I got to type something real fast. Sure. Al oh, I'm sorry if I say this name wrong. Al Alvader on Discord mm -hmm. writes, 
I know I'm late to the party, but PSVR 2. Interesting patent filed. What do you want to see? Thoughts? Yeah, there's another patent uh, coming out on a on the PSVR. I didn't I didn't put it in the show notes because it's just another rumor. And I don't want every other episode being a rumor, it has it? Rumor yeah. has it. So um, I think PSVR, I just want it wireless. That's all I really want. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's something, like like you said, we don't want to have a bunch of rumors on here. But Dual Shockers wrote an article today, actually, about a wireless PSVR 2 with, like, eye tracking. Um, yep. So, like, that's exactly what I want is the wireless thing. Because the wires here for my PSVR drives me nuts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's something like my nieces play Vacation Simulator, which I'm sure you're tired of hearing. But, like, how many times have they pulled out the HDMI cords from yeah. the bottom? Because they stepped on it, and they pulled out, and then I have to reconnect it and restart the VR unit itself. Now, yeah. it'll go away if everything was just wireless. <laughs> just wireless. They're not tripping just over wireless. anything. wireless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, wireless. Would you want it to be, like, an Oculus Go type of situation where, like, you could play it on the go? or? Oh, my God. Like not having the PS4 needed type yeah. thing, yeah, that would be. Or would stellar. you take? Well, okay, here's you're right. Here's the shoes advocate here. Okay, you can either have she has a gun on the table again. Remember oh, this? No, always great memories. So you maybe takes kill out the, the gun. You, he takes out his gun and he's like, <clears throat> you can either have a PSVR that's way more capable, as you know, the eye tracking, all that. Like it's the next gen. PSVR, or you have sure. a mobile VR unit. Which one has to die? One has to be connected oh, to the PlayStation 5. That's not where I thought you were going with. What? Uh, I thought you were going to give me the choice of wireless or more powerful. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, more powerful. Oh, you like, said yeah. mobile. So oh, I, I expected, like, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, God. I, one of the, them has a family, but you're not going to find out until she pulls the trigger. <laughs> listen, I love what PSVR does now. Yeah. So I'm going wireless. The wires are my biggest problem. Oh, you had two oh, no. kids. Oh, no. You turned those kids into superheroes, dude. Oh, God. I oh, am the villain now. A Good monster. Lord. A monster. All right. <laughs> Marcus <laughs> O'Neill writes in. Uh, I'm playing through, and I'm, I'm reading this, so I give you time to think. Uh, I'm playing through Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the first time in preparation for jumping into Bloodstained. Uh, while definitely ahead of its time, it still has a few frustrating game mechanics that are largely absent from modern games. What game mechanics from previous generations are you happy to be rid of? Are there any you miss? Uh, and looking into the future, what mechanics are commonly found in today's game that will no longer be around in 10 wow. to 20 years? Holy shit, what a question, that Marcus. That is such a great question. Right? Because, like, when you think about it, it's hard. That's yeah. what she's... He, because, like, it's been... First off, you get to decide. Do you want me to say that's what she said every time I make something that's somewhat perverted? Or do you want me to just go, who? You get to decide right now. <laughs> I feel like Hugh is more pop. Like I can put that on a shirt. Like that's what I, she sure, says. Sure, you can put that on the shirt, but I will laugh way. I will derail the show because I'll be laughing so hard every All time right. you make that sound. Hugh is <laughs> it's in. It's in. You hear here first, kids. Uh, oh, yeah. Man, so mechanics. like you don't think of game mechanics, right? Because they're just like. Because no. like you don't think of them because they're gone. They're just gone, and so here I'll. Can I have one more bad bit rant? Yeah, go ahead. Go. Okay. Think it, close your close your eyes, right? You think it 10 to 20 years from now. What, we were talking about games of the generation in uh in Luke Lore's Mixer channel, mixer.com slash the Incipit Ghost. And we were talking about it, and he was just like the game of the generation. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's a wrong conversation. It's games. Because every you see it, every generation, there's a game that breaks the mold innovates a feature or gets rid of one entirely you didn't know you wanted or didn't need and so like when i look at this generation right i i think of games like legend of zelda for exploration and uh yeah for exploration and cause and effect right so when you look at a game before breath of the wild you would shoot a bush with a fly, fire arrow. The bush would go up in flames, 
and that's it, right? You know, like in a few seconds, it'll just go away. In Breath of the Wild, you shoot the bush, and if it's next to a tree, that tree's on fire. The tree's next to another tree, that tree's in flames, right? When you're out in the wild, and <laughs> just like the game title, and there's a thunderstorm, and you're wearing all armor, you're kinetic, and you get zapped by lightning, right? When you're climbing a mountain, and it's raining, it's slippery, so you're going to fall, those are features that you've never seen in a video game that you will now see in video games because of that game, because of that inspiration. So like that's that's one that we have been introduced to that we'll see in games like Cyberpunk, right? Uh, when we take a look at games like God of War, and I say that God of War is a, a genre-defining and generational game that is unlike anything we've seen before because... What, you know, when you look at it, it's a father and son story, right? It is a, it is just a typical, you know, over the shoulder, uh, you know, fighting game or whatever, uh, action game, but no other game before that time had that over their shoulder one shot, right? Like that shot never ends. The story is constantly being pushed because there is no scene it's just one long scene. It's like Birdman that has been stretched, you know, a two hour film 20 times over. That's talent. You never see a loading screen in that video game ever. That's innovation. That is one mechanic we will never see in a video game in 10 years from now is loading screens with the next generation coming. That's the big push. You're never going to see that, right? Like even and I say it, Bloodborne, game of the generation, a game so good that it's now part of its own genre, Blood Souls or Souls Born. Mm -hmm. um, you see now games adopt that controller setup. Before it's oh, oh, every other game's like Arkham Knight, where it's your fighting's on the face plates. Now it's on the shoulders because it's easier for you to fight that way, right? Mm -hmm. It's your L1, R1, L2, L2 uh, uh, R2 to fight because it's easier that way for you to connect and then the face plates are you dodging and parrying like that's where it feels good you get that rhythm yeah. um so like that's a mechanic you don't you see in a game now because games innovated that way and then yeah. the last but not least you know and i went here um camera angles <laughs> that's the only one i got you know? yeah yeah for sure. I, what i what i was thinking of was uh like the fixed camera i'm glad they're gone uh, for the most part, like you, you have no control over the camera. Oh like, God, yes. What they give you, and, and, like old school Resident Evil. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm glad there's there's some sort of freedom of to control the camera, which is great. Um, yeah. a, a silly one that I'm, I kind of wish was gone, but it, it's Come. it's like, like when you earn like simple skills, like they lock simple things behind. <sighs> So like earning a double jump, like why can't why Rage just double 2's jump biggest the, problem beginning, right? Uh, like for me yeah. at least, Rage Two was just like double oh, jump, yeah. unlock that by finding a temple somewhere. Yeah, and you're like what? And that's no. the thing, like you you go through this hard fought battle, yeah. and then your reward is a double jump or yeah. a dash. Yeah, like that. It that they don't seem like they fit what you went through to get that, you know. Um, and, and also another thing that I just want gone completely mm -hmm. is having to upkeep weapons from breaking that is such a pain in the ass for me like yeah. the survival type that type stuff yeah. i get that it has a hardcore fan base weapon degradation sucks and yes I hate it too. for me that is such a bummer because like if i put all of my time in this super badass weapon yeah. and then if it breaks because i don't i'm bad at item management which i guess is my fault because i'm a yeah. bad gamer but like then it's gone forever, and yeah. that sucks. Yeah, that's um, bad. Also, I would I would say, God, this is a good one. We could go all day on this. Uh, yeah. He, uh, you see, it works. It really does work. I hate you. I hate <laughs> it really you. does work so good. <laughs> um, <coughs> is customizable UI? That's a mechanic yeah. we've been seeing. Like Division Two, we got Division Two today, right? Um, yeah. but like you can, you can manipulate that UI to exactly the way you, you want yep. it to be. So I like the implementation, uh, implement, whatever, uh, of mechanics to make gaming easier and more accessible for yep. people is something I'm always down for. And yeah, when we talk about camera angles, can we give a shout out to call of duty? 
because they figured out how first person shooters work. Absolutely. Right. Like, yeah. you know, even like third person shooters as well. We've gotten to the point where like I look at a game like Red Dead Redemption 2. And the reason why that's not like my game of the year. One of the reasons is the aiming sucks. Mm -hmm. If I have to like if I have to, you know, press R1 to heat sink on a guy to shoot him, your aiming sucks and your controls are awful. And you need to change them. And that takes me out of all the experiences when I see shit like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, that would that would um, be one thing. Yeah, another one that in, in ten twenty years, which I hope is no longer around. Tell me, I think we can all agree. I don't even know if it's a game mechanic per se, but in an open world game, Joe, where you have quests, mm -hmm. stop telling me to go bring thing, get things, and bring them back to you. <laughs> How Fetch dare you? Fetch quests need to go bye bye. Oh, especially okay. if like most of the game is just fetch quests. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. suck. Yeah, I hate. I agree. That. I agree 100%. With that, guys, uh, I actually think we have one last question. I think this comes from Tim Olf. Let me just see. Doop, 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 boop, boop. Tim Olf sent us is something, so I want to say. Damn it, Joe. Now, doop, 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 now what? you didn't even say the sound, but I am thinking of you saying the sound, and it's making <laughs> it's me laugh. Freaky. I hate you so well, much. just think of, wake up. Watch it, watch it, watch it, we brought it back uh tim olf asks is is it slow enough to catch up on your backlog if so what are the top three games you miss that you feel you have the opportunity to catch up on now have i mentioned how much i love song of the deep by insomniac mm -hmm. games i love that game and i need to finish it good choice good choice uh persona yeah, first that's game one comes of mine. Out of, um, <sighs> I mean, I talked about it. My game in the summer is Witcher Three. Yeah. I'm catching up on that. Yeah, I need to beat Witcher Three as well. Those are those are my two. I found two, and um, let me look back here. I mean, yeah, let me I look. mean, my whole shelf is backlog. Uh, like Dragon Quest uh, Eleven, or Eleven, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dragon Quest Eleven. I need to go back to Days Gone, Final Fantasy 15. As as much as people like to, to shit on it, uh, I want to play Mass Effect Andromeda really, really bad. Mm. Um, but yeah, my backlog is insane. Watch put the keys upon the table. <laughs> <laughs> but like, With, we yes. don't have that all that time. Yeah. Next week we got Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. And like, this Friday is Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. And then mm. I'm going to be getting Fire Emblem. Like, it, it doesn't stop. Like, oh, God. Do you need Fire coming. Emblem? Do you yeah, need man. Fire Emblem? Okay. I do. Hey, Kyle, can we make? Can we do something on the show right now before what, what we leave? We uh, what are you doing Wednesday the 31st? What are you, usually when we record. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm We're usually recording, day. right? Yeah, okay. I mean, so yeah, here's sure. the deal. Wednesday the 31st, okay? <laughs> 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, because that's when we usually record the show. We're going to do, and we're going to settle this once and for all, Kyle, because I'm tired of it. The 10 best PlayStation exclusive games so far. Because here's the thing, Kyle. I'm What's sick that? of you saying you're going to dethrone, you're going to get Bloodborne out of there. It pisses me off. So there, there you go. go. I'm ready to fight. You know what? You know who's been getting you sick, Kyle? Is it you? Are you poisoning me? Fuck out, you might, might be correct. So yeah, uh, July 31st, we're going to do the great PlayStation debate. We'll find a host, a person that will not swing either way. And that's what we'll do. Okay. And you know what we're going to do at the same exact time? Okay. We're going to raise money for Miss Katie Berto to help prevent cancer because that's what we're all about. So there you go. Absolutely. And we're, we'll, we'll be uh, giving away that trophy glass too, right? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Every $5 gets you an entry, gets you enrolled. So help support a really good cause. Yep. Again, cancer sucks. It's awful. So we want to prevent that for Katie. They got two kids, damn it. <sighs> Kyle, What's up? is there anything you'd like to talk about? Plug before we leave. Sure. Uh, as always, I like to plug myself, Ninja 73 on Twitter and on PSN. Uh, my show, all about the kind of funny community where I have a best friend on and we just get to know each other uh, and showcase why the community is amazing. A best friends talk funny on Twitter at BFS talk funny. 
and on podcast services wherever you listen, as well as uh, the Kind of NYC podcast, Dollar Slice Pod, which is uh, just us talking about the nerdy things that we love, um, at Dollar Slice Pod on Twitter, and the same thing wherever you listen to podcast services. And you can find this show at Bad Big Games on YouTube. We're 50 away from 3,000, so let's get to it, gang. Let's do it. I don't know what I'll do at 3,000. I guess I'll give you hand slaps. Everybody likes a good hand slap. Hey, so, yeah. hey Joe. What's that? I love you, 3,000. <sighs> Fuck you, Kyle. Fuck you. We're, we're not ready for that. All right. <laughs> With that said, you can find us on iTunes, any RSS feed, Spotify, is a good place to find us. You can rate us five stars and be greatly appreciated. And yeah, with all that said, with all that out of the way, do your good old podcast dad a favor and keep the door open three inches. Keep hunting and keep playing PlayStation. That's right. I got you back, you son of a bitch. I got your back. (laughs)